I'm Rebecca Virginia, and I know it seems early, but Christmas is out at the Dollar Tree and other crafting stores, so today I'm gonna share with you 35 of my favorite holiday DIYs from last year. I have seen different styles of Christmas trees already out at Target, but they can be 10 to $15 a piece, so I wanted to make some more affordable options. Hope that you can notice my dog in the background. He is always so curious on what I'm crafting. We're going to be making three different styles of trees, so I'm starting off with the smallest. I got these cones from Hobby Lobby. I got six in a pack, and I actually used them in a previous Christmas DIY. If you checked it out, I'll have it linked above. I turned these into ice cream waffle cones, but today I'm gonna be using them as they were intended. They were sold as styrofoam trees, so I'm gonna be transforming it into more of a decorative tree by taking some of this yarn. It's a little bit fluffier and softer than your typical yarn and I did pick it up at the Dollar Tree. I wrapped the yarn all the way around my styrofoam tree cone and then just hot glued it off at the top. For an extra embellishment and to add a little bit more of a fun texture, this pom-pom ribbon came in red and white at the Dollar Tree, and I grabbed the white pom-poms and just wrapped that around my tree. Lastly, I finished off this smaller Christmas tree with a wooden star. I picked up a whole pack of these wooden stars from Hobby Lobby and they have been going strong for three years now. So it was definitely worth the little bit more of a price than a dollar. Next up, I'm taking one of these larger styrofoam cones that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. And unlike the Christmas tree cones from Hobby Lobby, it does have a little bit more of a blunt point. It's not quite as pointy as a Christmas tree, but I will fix that by hiding it with a star. Using that same white ribbon, I covered my cone completely. And as an embellishment, I grabbed this deer ornament from the Dollar Tree. I was going to hot glue it on to the cone, but that then I realized the antlers fit perfectly to just kind of push that into the styrofoam and then it stayed in place. So it was a great alternative to using hot glue. And again, to kind of hide that blunt point at the top of our styrofoam cone, I went ahead and stained one of the wood stars that I had and hot glued that to the top so it looked more of a point like a Christmas tree. The last of our Christmas tree trio is going to take a little bit more of a rustic touch. I grabbed the lid to a Pringles container, really any kind of food. I even think that you could use a mason jar lid because we are going to be covering this in some jute. So even if it's a metal, you won't really be able to see it. Then I took some bamboo skewers that I picked up in a huge pack from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to be hot gluing eight all the way around my Pringles can lid. Then at the top, I hot glued them all to a point so it would look more like a Christmas tree. And I did put down a rubber band just to hold everything in place while the hot glue dried. Next step is super easy. You're just going to be covering this entire bamboo skewer tree in jute. The only slightly difficult part was the skewers were a little slippery. So especially for the first go around, I did have to add down a lot of hot glue to just keep the jute in place. But then once I had that initial first layer of jute down, it was a lot easier to go in with more jute and add them all in between. And then I did also do them at some different angles to create a little bit more of a texture and something more appealing to the eye. So after I went all the way straight, kind of, you know, basic around the tree. Then I started wrapping them diagonally and in different patterns. With my jute in place, I took another one of my wooden stars and I did stain it with a darker brown paint and then I hot glued that to the top of our tree. Now I wanted to fill my tree with some lights. So I just took one of my X-Acto knives and cut a little hole in the bottom of our tree, which we are later going to fill with lights. To add some faux ornaments onto our tree, I took these super tiny beads. I remember they came in a pack from the Dollar Tree and I was like, I'm never gonna use these, but look, it really pays to kind of hold on to some things because these worked perfectly as a rustic looking ornament on our tree. The final touch was adding some of those twinkle lights up in the tree. You can't quite see it in the photos, but at night this did look really pretty having this larger twinkling tree 
That's why it's important to leave some holes in between the jute so you are able to see that light. The next DIY is an adorable pom-pom winter hat, which actually uses some fall supplies from the Dollar Tree that you should pick up now before they overturn all of the fall items for Christmas. Here's what else you'll need to make this. We're going to be using one of the wood pumpkins from the Dollar Tree for this DIY. So the first step was tracing out the pumpkin shape onto scrapbooking paper so that I was able to add some glue to the back of that paper and then adhere it onto our wood pumpkin. To hide the stem of the pumpkin, we're gonna be covering it with a pom-pom and I'm just using a super easy pom-pom technique, nothing too fancy. I just took a bunch of white yarn and wrapped it around my hand. I did make it pretty thick because I wanted this to be a larger pom-pom and make sure you don't wind it too tight because it was a little bit difficult to take that off of my fingers. Then I took a longer piece about six inches and tied that very tightly through the center of the yarn bundle we just made. Then grabbing my scissors, I am just able to start cutting each of the sides and you can really see the pom-pom start to take shape. It is a little crazy at first so you have to give the pom-pom a haircut and kind of make sure that all of the ends of the yarn are around the same size and that is really going to create that dense nice pom-pom that you're probably thinking of and tie in that white yarn that we're going to have at the top with the pom-pom. I did add a bit more of it to the bottom section just by wrapping the yarn all around and then I hot glued the pom-pom to the top. I wanted a little bit more of an embellishment so I took one of these snowflake stickers that the Dollar Tree is currently selling and went ahead and just stuck that to the bottom left side of our wood pumpkin turned winter hat. I saw these wood skates for sale at the Dollar Tree and absolutely loved them, but wasn't sure what to do with them, so I decided to turn them into an ornament. Here's what you'll need to make this. The first thing that I knew I definitely wanted about these skates was for them to actually have laces. So the first thing I did before I went into any painting or decorating was drill some wood holes in them so that I would actually be able to lace them up. I drilled holes into every other loop section and then once that was done, I went in with my paint to really bring these skates to life. For the actual blades of the skates, I wanted this to be rustic, so instead of going in with a silver metal blade material, I did go in with some stain. Then I grabbed some jute and actually laced through the laces and the holes that I had created. And once the skates were all laced up, it was time to turn them into an ornament. So I grabbed some more jute and just tied and knotted them at the top so that they would be able to hang off of my tree just like an ornament. I have seen these larger ornaments all over Pinterest, so I had to try my hand at them. They use some really easy to find Dollar Tree party supplies, and you can turn it into a giant ornament. I think this would look amazing outside. I think I'm gonna do some outdoor decor. Maybe I'll put that in a future video. Let me know in the comments down below if that's something you'd like to see. But here are all of the supplies you'll need to recreate this. For this DIY, you really only need a couple of supplies from the Dollar Tree. I am using two of these large clear plastic bowls from the party section. They also have some that have textures that I think would also look nice. We are going to be placing in some battery operated timer lights into our faux ornament. You could also do remote control lights. I would recommend either timer or remote control if you're going to actually hot glue these two bowls together. I just used a little bit of clear tape so that I could change out the lights in there. But that's entirely up to you. Really, only if you're using this outside would I say you have to use hot glue. Otherwise, for inside, they sat very nicely together. I used one of the food containers that I painted in a gold metallic to be the topper of our ornament. And I've seen a lot of people use a shower ring for this section, but I could only find the metal shower rings, not the actual ring shower 
rings at my Dollar Tree. So I ended up using this pack of wood circles. I just cut it in half and painted that using the same gold metallic paint. If you're not into the clear bowls with the lights, you could always paint these bowls and really create whatever type of ornament that you wanted to. Really, I think you could even turn this into a candy if you saw my previous video where I did a bunch of the faux Christmas foods and candies. You might notice a theme from the thumbnail for this video, but we are going to be making a lot of faux holiday treats in this video. Gingerbread cookies, ice cream, hot cocoa. This video is full of them. And we're going to kick off the DIYs with these fun faux ice cream ornaments that will look perfect and delicious on your tree. I'm going to be using spackle in quite a few of my DIYs for this video. So I went ahead and picked up two of these containers from the Dollar Tree. You can find it in the hardware section. So I already made the smaller ice cream scoops, which I just showed you, but now we're going to be making some larger ice cream scoops. I got these scoops off Amazon. They came with three, a larger one for ice cream, smaller one for cookies, and then a medium one. I used the medium and now the large one for the ice cream. The spackling looks perfectly like ice cream. It's actually kind of crazy how much it really does look like ice cream, not faux food. So once I scooped those out, I did leave it for a little over 24 hours to dry. But before they dried, I did sprinkle them with a little bit of cinnamon. And as I showed earlier for the smaller scoops, I did add some red and green beads. That was the fake sprinkles. And I did put in a small cinnamon stick into one of our smaller ice creams. Now we are going to make the cones. I got this set of six. They called them Christmas trees at Hobby Lobby for $3.99 for six, but it was 40% off. And I'm going to be using three of them and these are going to be our ice cream cones, not our Christmas trees. So I am painting them with the color Khaki by Folk Art. And I went ahead and just gave them a good coat on all three and then set them aside to dry. I placed a bamboo skewer in the bottom of them so that it would be easier to paint, but especially for this next part. So I'm going to be creating a waffle cone effect using some hot glue. And it's actually pretty easy. The only difficult part is keeping a steady hand to make sure that your lines stay straight. But you're just going to do diagonal lines all the way down your cone one way and then flip it as you can see me doing right here and then go in the other direction. And you will soon start to see that waffle cone texture take shape. The bamboo skewer came in really handy here because I didn't have to fully turn the cone. I was just able to twirl the skewer and then that perfectly rotated my styrofoam cone for me. Once the hot glue had dried, I went over it again with the khaki colored paint. Make some faux cherries to top off the ice cream. I took wood beads and painted them red and added some red sequins. The cherries are also going to be vital in turning this ice cream into an ornament. I took some of this red and white striped thread and threaded it right through the wood bead and knotted it, leaving a loop at the top that of course is going to be the area that we can hang on our tree. Next, it is time to start assembling our ice cream cones. I'm going to do one cone with a triple scoop and the other two are going to be double scoop. I'm just taking our spackle scoops now that they have dried and hot gluing them to the cone and then on top of one another and of course putting the cherry on top. The double scoop is going to start the same way that we did with our singles by taking that larger spackle scoop and hot gluing it down onto the base of the cone. Then for the two smaller scoops, I just kind of hot glued them at angles, kind of looking like a Mickey Mouse head. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any fun faux food items on your Christmas tree, maybe besides a gingerbread man. I feel like a lot of people probably have that on their tree, but I also know some do the pickle ornament or some other crazier kind of food. So let me know in the comments down below what you have on your tree. 
Next up, we are making some faux peppermints. And not only do I have some smaller peppermints to show you, but I am also going to teach you how you can take one of the foam pumpkins that are currently for sale at the Dollar Tree. That's right, pick up a pumpkin for Christmas decor. This is going to be a great larger peppermint. That'll be great if you're a fan of larger decor in the home, or this is kind of already weatherproof since it's covered in cellophane. This would also make some really great outdoor Christmas decorations. But first up, we're going to start with the smaller item. I picked up a pack of these small styrofoam circles. I did make this peppermint stencil, but you could always freehand it, but I really wanted the peppermint swirls to be precise on these smaller ones. The larger pumpkin peppermint I did freehand, so if you wanna see how to do that, just stay tuned and I'll show you in a bit. Whenever I use a stencil on my wood pieces or canvases, I always put down a little bit of Mod Podge first. It just really ensures that the paint doesn't run. So I also did that here on the styrofoam circle. I'm not sure if it actually did anything, but when I did remove the stencil, the lines were very crisp. So I'm not sure if it was just the texture of the styrofoam or because I laid down that Mod Podge. Then I took the color Crimson by Waverly to fill in those peppermint stripes and added a little bit of this red glitter glue from the Dollar Tree. I figured the more glitter, the better during the Christmas season. So I laid that down on top and left it to dry before peeling the stencil off. I purchased a roll of Dollar Tree clear wrap and I am using this to create the candy wrapper for my peppermint. I laid down the candy so that the back was facing me and just taped three little areas, the center and then the two sides to secure that in place. Then I flipped it back over so that the front of the peppermint was facing me and using some clear elastic hair ties, I just tied the two ends so that you get that classic candy wrapper look. Moving on to the larger faux peppermint, I am taking one of the styrofoam pumpkins that the Dollar Tree currently has out right now. So make sure that you pick this up if you're wanting to make some faux peppermints. And I painted this entire pumpkin white. My Dollar Tree only had the black and orange pumpkins, but if you have the white ones, that will even cut down on your time more. So for this one, I am freehanding it. I again took my red paint by Waverly and I'm kind of just following the direction that I made on the smaller peppermints and creating these red candy swirls. Just like the other peppermints, I am laying down some glitter but instead of using glitter glue, I decided to go with some of these loose sequins, of course, also from the Dollar Tree. So I put down a little bit of Mod Podge to act as the adhesive and sprinkled on that glitter. Then again, doing the same thing as the smaller pumpkins, flipping it so the back of the peppermint faces me and adding a little bit of tape before flipping the peppermint back over and creating those candy wrapper ends using some clear elastics. It is a little bit harder on the larger pumpkin just because that clear wrap is of course going to be longer, but don't worry at the end, I do take my scissors and trim it down a little so we don't have these super long ends. Let me know in the comments down below which peppermints you are most likely to recreate. The smaller ones that you can pop into your Christmas tree or maybe the larger ones you can use for some outdoor decor. The next DIY is actually a suggestion from one of my amazing subscribers. I read every single comment on my videos and all of you have some great ideas and suggestions that I love reading. They are very inspiring to me. So thank you to my great subscriber who suggested that I make some snowmen out of clay. I took it a little step further to make it into the faux food category. So we are going to jump into making some clay marshmallows marshmallows. These are really easy to make. I just rolled it into a ball and then from the ball formation just used my fingers to shape out the edges of the ball and make it more into that square marshmallow shape. I let the snowman marshmallows dry for 48 hours before continuing on to painting their faces. I used black paint for the coal eyes and the smile and then I went in with some orange paint for our carrot nose and then let 
let these dry overnight. The clay was almost completely dry after 48 hours, but I did give it another 24 hours to really just make sure that everything was dry before I started styling our snowman marshmallows. The first way to style these is in a mug with some hot cocoa. To not use up all of my hot cocoa packets, these were actually expired from about two or three years ago, I think, but they were expired. So instead of throwing them out, I decided to use them in this DIY, but just to not use quite as much because I might want to use it for other staging purposes, I did put down a part of an empty paper towel roll and then I made a little lid for it out of cardstock so that I could cover the top up with the hot cocoa powder. This was just a way so I didn't have to use quite as many hot cocoa packets. And then I styled the marshmallows on top, just like you would with a cup of real hot cocoa. A second way to style these snowmen marshmallows is using this glass gumball machine that I got from the dollar spot section of Target. And I filled up the bottom and about the middle section with some of this filling that I got from Joanne Fabrics. I thought it made a really great faux snow. And then I just layered all of our marshmallow snowmen down in there before placing the lid back on. As a further embellishment, I'm taking some of this frayed ribbon in a neutral color and tying it around the gumball machine. And I also grabbed a wood snowflake from the Dollar Tree. They're actually stickers that come on a pack with some other cute winter decor like Christmas trees and some gold stars. The last way that I'm going to show you how to style these snowman marshmallows is as a Christmas ornament. So I grabbed this sled ornament from the Dollar Tree. I don't remember seeing them last year, so they might be new or maybe my Dollar Tree just didn't get them in. And I placed all of the snowman marshmallows inside the sled. Of course, use some hot glue or some other type of adhesive if you're going to hang it on your tree. Let me know in the comments down below which of the three is your favorite way to style the snowman marshmallows. Moving into some more traditional Christmas faux food, we're going to begin decorating some gingerbread men and women, starting off with making our very own gingerbread man using one of the wood cutouts from the Dollar Tree. I know that they had these last year, but I could not get my hands on them. So if you see them at your Dollar Tree, make sure to pick them up because they're at least hard for me to find. So I'm going to start off by painting him and I started off with a lighter color brown. It was the same khaki color that I used on the ice cream cones, but I didn't really like this. I didn't think it looked very gingerbread man-like. So I added in a little bit of a darker brown. I added the burnt umber color from Apple Barrel. For the accents on our gingerbread man, I'm taking the color Crimson by Waverly and adding that to his face, his peppermint bow tie, and his buttons. I also added in some details around his face and also some of that glitter glue that I used earlier on the peppermints onto his buttons so they had a little bit of a shine to it. We're going to make some faux icing using spackle from the Dollar Tree, again found in the hardware section. And to put this in the piping bag, I added probably about three tablespoons of water just to make the spackling a little bit more runny so it wasn't quite so thick. And then I cut a small hole into my plastic bag and was able to pipe this faux frosting all around my gingerbread man. I let the spackle or faux frosting dry for 24 hours before I went back in with a smaller brush and that same crimson color to accent his sleeves and down by his feet. And then I used the piping bag again to add some little drops to kind of mimic gumdrops. And I did put the bag with the wet spackling in a Ziploc bag and that kept overnight. It didn't harden or anything. So I'm not sure if you kept it longer in might harden, but at least for 24 hours, I was able to keep it intact so that I could reuse it when I went back in for those gumdrop buttons. Now that we have our gingerbread man, it's only right that we make our gingerbread woman. So using one of the galvanized caps from the Dollar Tree, I made this gingerbread girl that you could either use as hanging decor or make it as an ornament that you can place in your tree. 
using the same color combo of the umber by apple barrel as well as that lighter khaki color i coated the entire intersection of our galvanized bottle cap before going in with black paint, I used a Sharpie so that it was easier to draw out the eyes and the smile on my gingerbread girl. And then off camera, I did go back in with a smaller detailing brush and some black paint to go over that face. Exactly like I did previously with our gingerbread man, I'm using the spackling in a piping bag. My camera did die, but I did the exact same technique that I did with the gingerbread man. But while the spackling was still a little bit wet, I did sprinkle some faux snow from Dollar Tree on it to kind of give it that sugary looking effect. Then I went in with some pink paint to make the cheeks on our gingerbread girl and her nose before taking one of my white markers from the Dollar Tree and going in to add some details around her eyes. I took this larger red gingham pattern ribbon from the Dollar Tree and cut off the wire that was on the edges before cutting down the center so I had a thinner, smaller ribbon to work with. I also pulled at the edges so that they were a little bit more frayed and kind of had more of like a Raggedy Ann vibe before making a bow and placing that onto my gingerbread girl's head. I decided that I'm going to use this as an ornament on my tree, so I added back on the jute hanger that it came with and then added the hot glue to adhere the bow to the top of our gingerbread girl's head i have also seen some other people on pinterest turn this into a snowman face which i also think is really cute this is a snowman muffin tin and i am planning to leave this up all winter long i hate taking down the christmas decorations but it's always fun when you get to put up some cute snowmen I started off this DIY by grabbing one of the muffin tins from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to be using paint, cinnamon, and Mod Podge on this. So first I grabbed some sandpaper and just roughed up the surface a little bit. Now I'm moving on to creating a faux rusting effect. Now you could just take a muffin tin that you have around your house if it is rusty, but I didn't have one so we're going to create the effect of rust because I don't have the months and time it would take for this to actually rust on its own. So to create this, I took cinnamon, Mod Podge, and a bit of brown paint. I don't know if you could tell, but I accidentally spilled the entire thing almost of cinnamon. Luckily, this was cinnamon from the Dollar Tree and it was a pretty big container, but I did not mean to spill that much. You don't need that much cinnamon. That was definitely on accident. And what you're gonna do, I found that taking a paintbrush and using a stippling method creates the best faux rusty effect. And what I'm doing to create the effect is I'm dipping my paintbrush in the paint Mod Podge mixture, and then I am dipping it in the dry cinnamon and then just going ahead and stippling it all over the muffin tin, really concentrating in the edges, because I think that's where rust would naturally start to grow on the edges of the muffin tin. And then for aesthetic purposes, I'm going a little bit inside the muffin tin. We'll be painting the bottom section to look like a snowman, but around the edges, I wanted that to have some definition, so I added a bit of that faux rust to that area as well. Next, it's time for what I think is the most fun part of this DIY, and that's beginning to create our snowman. So I took one of these small sponge brushes from the Dollar Tree, and some white paint and I'm just swirling it on the inside of this muffin tin and I'm not being precise I'm being kind of messy because I want this to look very homemade and rustic looking so I don't want clean edges I just kind of swirled the paint around you can kind of see a little bit on the video but I did go in with just my index finger and a little bit of pink paint and I went and made one small little dot to kind of be blush on the snowman's cheeks, but it's very, very faint. You can't see it too much. Then I went back in with my detailing tool. It's a daughter tool. You can pick them up at the Dollar Tree. They sell them now. And I went in with black paint, and then in just a moment, I'll be going in with orange paint. And I'm just using this to create the dot eyes for my snowman and their smiling faces. And then I added a couple of different embellishments to the top of this muffin tin, but first I took a bunch of these garland picks from the Dollar Tree and kind of created what I called a crown. I ended up using four different garland picks. 
to create this arrangement that I hot glued at the top of the muffin tin. And I'm going to be having this up probably all January and February in the winter months. So I wanted to add in some of these snow covered branches to bring in some of that icy snowy winterness from outside. And then I added two bells that have snowflakes on them to the lower center portion. And I also took two cinnamon sticks. I got these in a pack at the grocery store and I just hot glued those on opposite ends of our topper. And as the final touch, I made a bow out of raffia and I kept the ends pretty long because I do want it to hang down. So I just hot glued that at a slight angle in the center. If you're planning on just propping this DIY up on your kitchen counter, then you would be done. But I think I'm going to hang this off of one of my kitchen cupboard knobs. So to do that, I took some of this gold wire that I had and I just made it a double so it was a little bit stronger and made a loop and then hot glued it to the back of the muffin tray. And then once that dried, it was perfect and could hang really easily off of my kitchen cupboards. For our next kitchen DIY, we have this adorable hanging gingerbread man. All right, so for this next DIY, we're going to be using the foam gingerbread men from the Dollar Tree. And I took the foam and traced it out onto some cardboard. You could use maybe a box that you got in the mail, just peel off one of the sides of it and you can use that. So I cut that out so it was in the gingerbread shape and then I just took my glue stick and really the foam gingerbread was more so as a stencil, but I am gonna put this on the back of my sign, but if you're gonna be hanging it, you don't really need to have anything on the back of the sign because you won't be able to see it because what's actually going to be the front is this really pretty 12 days of Christmas scrapbooking paper I got at Hobby Lobby that has the red music notes on it and I went ahead and took the glue stick and glued that down too. Then I really wanna hang this in my kitchen off one of my cabinets, so I grabbed my red and white baker's twine that I have from the Dollar Tree and I kind of made a mistake because I should have put it down before I put the foam gingerbread guy on there. But it was okay. It was only using the glue stick, so it was easy to peel that back and then stick the baker's twine down on there so that I can have something for it to hang off of. Next, I'm going in with some of this white yarn that I have. And I thought it was great not only because it kind of made it look like icing going all the way around our gingerbread man, but also because it was a really great way to cover up and hide any of the cardboard that might have been peeking through on the sides or if I didn't cut absolutely perfectly, it was a really great way to just disguise any of the cardboard that might have been peeking through. Because this is a kitchen DIY video, I not only wanted to have a gingerbread man sign, but I really wanted it to look like a gingerbread cookie. So to add some faux sugar onto my gingerbread man, I took some of this fake snow and I just took the glue stick that I had been using earlier and placed it down on the front of our gingerbread man. And then I sprinkled the glitter on top and kind of pressed it a little just to make sure that it would stay in place. And then I waited about 30 minutes just to make sure that all of the glue was dry. And then I just shook off the gingerbread man in case any of the excess glitter came off. For a couple of embellishments on our gingerbread man, I took this little floral pick with berries and I added a little bit of white paint so it looked like it had been out in the snow. And then I took two of these jingle bells and I gave them a little bit more of a rustic touch by adding some brown paint. Then I went in and added the floral pick, kind of like where his bow tie would be. And then I added the two jingle bells down at the center of him. Buttons would also work as a substitute for the jingle bells, or I know that they make some of those buttons that look like food shapes. So if you had those, that would be really cute to add to this adorable kitchen DIY too. All 
all the DIYs in today's video have a similar woodland theme to them and I use a lot of buffalo tech in the projects as well. First up, I'm gonna be showing you how to make this lantern really only using two larger items from the Dollar Tree. Also, I apologize for my voice in today's video. I am recovering from a little bit of a cold, so sorry if it sounds a little gross, but you know, the video must go on and just like it is the time of the year for Christmas DIYs, it's also the time of the year for colds. But moving on, so first up, I am taking this, basically it's like a mason jar with a handle and it's a mug from the glassware section and I painted it entirely black. Then I took one of these larger, I think it's like a vase, but I called it more like a candle holder. And this fits perfectly down into our mason jar cup. This is going to be, of course, the top of our lantern. And I just stuck a tea light down inside of it. And to finish it all off and kind of tie it together, as well as hide some of the lip marks on the top of our mason jar, I took one of these Buffalo check bows from the Dollar Tree. I did cut it down a little bit because it was a little bit too large. And then just adding some hot glue, I added it right into where the glass vase and our mason jar meet. I absolutely love this DIY. It's so quick and easy, but I think really looks like a fancy kind of woodland theme lantern that you could also leave up all season long. It doesn't just have to be for Christmas. I think it works really well into the winter months too. Per usual, the Dollar Tree came out with some great calendars for the upcoming new year. And I absolutely loved this image of the Christmas tree and the red truck from one of my calendars. So I knew that I had to put it in one of my DIYs this year. I picked up quite a few of these mason jar signs this past summer because I love using them in DIYs. I recently used it in a fall video. I'll pop up a picture of that. I think they are so great. So if you ever see them, definitely pick a couple up because they are great to use throughout the year. I did take off some of the more bulky fruit pieces because you know me, I gotta save everything. I'm sure I'll use it in a spring or summer DIY. And then I just flipped over my sign so I had more of that blank canvas to work with. I did paint the upper section of the mason jar using a dark green paint. I am going to be covering it in jute, but just in case there's any areas where some color does peek through, I wanted it to be that nice winter as well as a forest green. Then I took some Buffalo check scrapbooking paper. I always pick mine up from Hobby Lobby. They're pretty much always on sale or running a deal with them. And I just adhered that down to my wood sign using a glue stick. The Dollar Tree came out with some great calendars this year, but I think my favorite is this farmer's market one. I just really particularly enjoyed the images in this one. And I don't have a giveaway in today's video, but I'm definitely gonna be holding at least one more before 2023. So make sure that you're staying tuned to all of my videos. I might not particularly announce it in the title, but I am gonna be having at least one more calendar giveaway before the new year, because I know a lot of you weren't able to get your hands on this calendar, but I still want you to be able to craft with it and use it. After I adhered the image down with a glue stick, I wrote out Merry Christmas using some bits of cardboard. This cardboard actually came with the calendar, so that's what I used. And I did use my cutting machine to cut out Merry Christmas. I also took a stain. I really like the antique stain by Waverly to stain all of my letters. With the cardboard, I did notice that the stain clung to some areas more than others. Whereas I think if you used a basswood or a faux wood or even the wood letters from the Dollar Tree, I I think I would have liked it a little bit better because yeah, I did notice that the stain clung a little bit oddly to some of the cardboard, but I would definitely recommend picking up some of those wood letters from the Dollar Tree. I think that really would have spelled out Merry Christmas even better, but I still love the way that this mason jar hanging sign came out. And I did add a little bit of embellishment in the top right using some greenery, ribbon, and a faux acorn. The Dollar Tree comes out with these wood house signs pretty much every year. I've definitely seen them for the last two. I picked it up last year and never crafted with it. So I was very excited when I had an idea for what I wanted to make this year. I was able to go into my craft stash and use some supplies I already had. 
The first part of this DIY is giving it a bit of a farmhouse makeover. I did like the buffalo check and I will bring some of those elements back into it. But first off, I wanted to lay down some of this kind of looks like a shiplap paper. Again, picked it up from Hobby Lobby. Absolutely love the value that you get for their scrapbooking paper. And I did realize that I forgot to kind of cut off the section where our little roof is going to be. So once I trim that down to size, I did use a spray adhesive. I really like this one from Elmer's. So I just spray down my area and then laid the scrapbooking paper on. And because it was a larger piece of scrapbooking paper, I used my scraper tool just to iron out any bubbles and make sure that my paper was laying nice and flat. I used a dark brown paint to cover up that buffalo check design on the chimney and then I went in and of course had to make it farmhouse dirty it up a little bit more by doing some dry brushing and using brown paint to distress the backing of our house. Next, I went in with some more details. So I wanted this to be kind of a cozy looking cabin, very woodland. So I picked up these smaller Christmas trees, which you can use for a Christmas village. And I am going to put that in the bottom right hand corner. Then to add a little bit of the rustic touch, I took some jute and wound that three times around the top. So you can see that I was going for the black and white buffalo check kind of theming here, but I wasn't really liking it. I felt like I needed a pop of color. So I decided to go with red and I chose a red and kind of beige buffalo check bow. And then here I am trying to decide what I'm gonna do for the paper, but I ended up choosing this one. It was 12 days of Christmas sheet music and it had that hint of red that I thought matched the bow really nicely. So so I hot glued that down onto our sign and then I followed up with some more jute on the bottom of our sign. Then I went ahead and once I was happy with my coloring choices, added the hot glue to make the bow a bit more permanent. And I did take a bell, which I used a little bit of brown paint to kind of add some faux rust. And I put that in the center of our bow before then hot gluing down the tree. Now that I had finally decided what color color and kind of scrapbooking paper to use. I picked up these ornaments. They came on a cardboard card with quite a few ornaments. And I wasn't sure if I wanted to use the Buffalo check or the plain red, but I did end up going with the plain red Merry Christmas tag. I thought the other Buffalo check was the wrong shade of red. So I added a little bit of jute because I had already cut off the ornament hanger. And once I added the jute, I hot glued that down into place, leaving a little bit of extra jute at the top so it kind of looked like it was hanging off of our sheet music, which we already hot glued down. And then I went in and added a little bit more jute across the line of the sheet music. So it kind of looked like it was a really big package that was wrapped in some of this sheet music wrapping paper. The final touch was adding just a little jute bow onto where the hole was on my hanging ornament. I love how this turned out. I am definitely going to be displaying it on my mantle this year. I'm really excited to share how I decorate that with you guys in a future video. I love taking the ornaments from the Dollar Tree and giving them a makeover. So I definitely wanted to include one in today's video. This is a cute ornament from the Dollar Tree, but doesn't really go with my decorating style for the holidays. So I am giving it, like I said earlier, a makeover. I took off that little silver piece and later off camera, I took off the buttons and the buckle from the front of the sign because I kind of have an idea for how I want to use that in a different DIY. Then I took a wet paper towel and some stain and I'm just staining that back MDF board of our ornament. Using, surprise, surprise, Buffalo Jack scrapbooking paper, that's kind of the theme in today's video, I cut out a tree and then using a glue stick, just adhered that down to the front of our ornament. Going more with this video's rustic woodland themed, I wanted to add a little bit more of that rustic element to this ornament. So I did take some hot glue and jute and I hot glued the jute twice all around the outer section of the ornament. 
I added in a jute hanger so we'll be able to hang our ornament off the tree and then added some hot glue to put that silver ornament topper back into place. I made the exact same floral winter arrangement as I did in one of the previous DIYs to go on top of the ornament. It had a little bit of that garland, ribbon, and again, the acorn to really top everything off. And I love the way that this looks in my tree. It definitely is gonna go with the style of all my other ornaments that I have. Most of these today are going to be napkin decoupages. I'll show you a couple different techniques of applying the napkins, and we'll also do a fun DIY using some of the Christmas wrapping paper that's currently out at Dollar Tree. For this first bowl, we are actually going to be taking a candlestick holder and a bowl from the Dollar Tree. And to get them both to match, I am coating the candlestick holder in some of this white chalk paint. And I also gave the bowl a coat of chalk paint too, just so that our napkins would decoupage a little bit nicer onto them. To accessorize the candlestick, I went around it with some red and green dots, and then I moved straight on to the bowl. So to decorate the bowl, I started off with this napkin with snowflakes and snowmen. The snowmen are going to be the main focal point of our decor piece, but I also wanted some snowflakes too. I took a wet paintbrush, just dipped it in a little bit of water and went around the image that I wanted to decoupage onto the bowl. This way you're able to tear it a little bit easier. You could just use your fingers to tear it. I grabbed one of these plastic kind of spatulas that I have from Cricut and just used that to really scrape away the excess napkin. From a lot of things that I've seen on Pinterest and TikTok, when you do this pulling apart method, it just decoupages a little bit more seamlessly onto your surface rather than if you cut it out. Now for our snowmen, I kept some of that blue background and then I did the same technique, taking that wet paintbrush and just going all around our image. And then I went on pretty traditionally just using Mod Podge. I layered a little bit of Mod Podge down, then placed my napkin on and put the Mod Podge on top. It's always a little bit more difficult when you're decoupaging on a curved surface rather than a flat surface. So I just really made sure to go sparingly on the Mod Podge so wrinkles didn't form. And I also added some more of those snowflakes onto the candlestick part. The last big step here is adhering the candlestick to your bowl. So then you actually have created your decor piece. So I went ahead and did this with some hot glue. I would also recommend adding a little bit of E6000. I use this as a candy dish. I actually placed down some filling from Joanne Fabrics in there and some fairy lights, but you could fill this with whatever holiday treats that you want. Instead of napkins in this DIY, we're going to be using some wrapping paper from the Dollar Tree. I love this sign as a freestanding piece of decor, but you could also add a hanger on it and put it on your front door or throughout your house. First up, I grabbed this MDF board, which is a reindeer cutout, and using a flathead screwdriver and my hair dryer, I was able to loosen up the glue. So I separated this into three parts, the nose, the deer silhouette, and the antlers. And for the actual deer face, I went in with some brown stain and laid that all over our deer head. Then for the nose, I took one of my napkins that I had and it's a poinsettia on it. And I just laid some Mod Podge on the MDF circle. And then I put down the napkin and put some more Mod Podge on top. I was using a paintbrush, but my fingers worked even better. Now for the ears, we're going to be covering them in wrapping paper. I picked this one up. I thought it was so gorgeous from the Dollar Tree. I love the silver and gold. And of course the deer is going to fit very well on this deer sign. I just traced it all out using a white colored pencil. Kind of works a lot like chalk because you can really rub it off. So you won't be able to see any of your colored pencil lines. And then once I cut these out, I just laid them on top of the MDF antlers using a glue stick. 
I did the same thing to the right side antlers and then grabbed my hot glue gun to piece everything back together first laying down the nose and then hot gluing on the antlers. And once I did this, I thought I was done, but the deer was looking a little bit bare, so I wanted to add on some more embellishments. I wanted to keep this kind of woodland and rustic looking, so I went with the burlap bow and then a jute bow on the inside of that and still wanted a little something, so I decided to add some eyelashes to the deer and that really pulled together the entire look. Once I actually figured out how to correctly do this DIY, it was really fast and really easy. So you can learn from some of my mistakes, which I will show you in this next DIY and show you how you can create your own custom candles using a napkin. So I picked up these candles. They came in a pack from the Dollar Tree and this napkin is also from the Dollar Tree. It was a two ply, so I did pull it apart to make sure it was just one thin sheet. So I had read all over that you could use a hair dryer to do this, but as you can see, that absolutely did not work out for me. It was flying everywhere. I think a heat gun would work, but the hair dryer was just a fail for me. So I had also seen some women do this on Pinterest using their iron. So I just grabbed my little Cricut heat press and put it on the very lowest setting. I would recommend wrapping the tissue paper in parchment before putting down your iron or your heat press on this. I unfortunately was out of my parchment or butcher paper, so I did not do this. Nothing happened with my heat press. I think the only thing that might happen is you might get some of the wax from the candle on it, so do be careful of that. Again, really recommend the parchment paper. Do as I say, not as I do but the napkin melted so beautifully onto this candle. It looked seamless. The white of the napkin pretty much evaporated into the candle. So all you see is the greenery and the holly berries. I absolutely love how these came out and you could use any napkin pattern that you wanted and really create your own custom candles. I would be very careful if you're going to light these. I'm just doing these for decoration and then I immediately blew them out afterwards. So if you do use these, please just be careful. Next up, we are decoupaging a wood block from the Dollar Tree and turning it into a Christmas present. But the best thing about this DIY is that I am trying out a brand new technique that I have never done before when it comes to napkins and decoupage. I grabbed my Dollar Tree napkin and the first part was painting the wood block white and then trying to figure out which section of the napkin I liked the best, I tried to get the most greenery I could. Now, this is the really cool part, I think. I am taking some plastic cling wrap and I'm covering the wood block in this and of course cutting it down to size so that I don't have too much excess. Then I laid the napkin right on top of the cling wrap and this is where I had used up all of <laughs> my parchment paper that was left on this DIY. I laid that on top so that the cling wrap didn't melt on to my small iron. Then it was kind of like magic. The napkin completely adhered and I guess because of the heat there were zero wrinkles. It was so nice. And then just to get off the excess cling wrap, I did just take a little bit of sandpaper and sand down the edges before going over it one more time just to make sure everything was secure and down. The last little bit, I at first was not really sure what I was gonna do with this wood block. I just thought the technique was really cool. And then I realized that it really looked like a present to me. So I added a bow on top to finish off this DIY. After trying out the cling wrap method, melting napkins on the candles, and also using wrapping paper to decoupage with, I wanted to do one DIY that was just a very traditional decoupage. So I grabbed one of these small glass plates from the Dollar Tree. I think you could also pick up one of their glass trivets. That would be really pretty. Unfortunately, my store only had the ones with the images already on them. So I went with the plate. And I'm doing this 
just super traditional. I cut the image out. It took me quite a while. I was watching a show while I was cutting out all of these pieces of holly and this large poinsettia. And then I laid down some Mod Podge on the plate, placed down my napkin image, and then went over it again with some Mod Podge. And the whole time I was using my fingers to really smooth out the tissue paper. I have also seen a technique where you can take some cling wrap or a plastic bag and lay that over the napkin and then smooth everything out. But luckily for me, everything was cooperating with me. I didn't have too many large wrinkles, so I didn't need to try out the Ziploc bag method. But you'll have to let me know in the comments down below if you've heard of that. And if you have, has it worked for you? So then I started cutting out all of these little pieces of holly, but I wanted to use some editing magic because you all know how to cut out images. So I didn't want to bore you with five minutes of me cutting out all of these holly pieces. And I wanted this to be the border around the larger poinsettia. So I'm doing the same exact technique of laying down the Mod Podge and then laying down the holly image and then covering that, of course, with some more Mod Podge. Once all of my napkin pieces were adhered down, I did leave this to dry for about 12 hours. It says that it'll dry in about four to six, but just to be safe, I left it overnight. So then to finish everything off, I am taking some of this dishwasher safe Mod Podge. I never put anything actually in the dishwasher, but it is nice when you're just cleaning it off in the sink to not, you know, really have to worry about if water is gonna ruin everything. So again, let me know if you've actually put these items in the dishwasher, I would love to know if it actually does hold up. Today's video is all about the different types of window clings the Dollar Tree is selling right now. First up, we have this traditional classic type of a window cling. The Dollar Tree also sells these wall art stickers that are easily removable. So we'll be doing some fun DIYs with these. And the last type of window cling we're gonna be working with is new to me this year. It was in the back of the window cling package. And it's these puffy window clings that are almost like stickers. I have always wanted to create my own hot cocoa bar for the holidays and I thought today was the perfect time to share this with you all. I'll be showing you how I styled my bar cart into a hot cocoa bar and how I utilize some of the different types of window clings that the Dollar Tree has to make this all come together. So first up, I removed everything except for that speaker <laughs> from the top of my bar cart and I'm going to be covering up with this uncorked sign that we use have on there but I just flipped it so that the back was showing and I'll be covering it in some of these really fun sticker wall art pieces. I wanted this to be hot cocoa themed so of course I'm going to be using that large hot cocoa jar mug and just decorating the back of this. The great thing is the stickers are very easily removable so I removed that candy cane a couple times to position it exactly how I wanted. The next DIY that we're going to be doing that I will be putting on the bar cart is this DIY decor piece that I actually made a few videos back. It was in my napkin decoupage video and I made it by taking a white bowl from the Dollar Tree and gluing it on top of one of the clear candlestick holders. I love reversible DIYs and DIYs that you can use multiple times. So I purposefully left the backside of the bowl and candlestick holder holder blank when I did my napkin a decoupage video because I already had an idea for this video in mind. Originally, I wanted to take that larger mug of cocoa that I ended up using on the sign for the bar cart, but it was too large. So instead, I went the traditional route and used one of the just regular original window cling packages. And I took a gingerbread man. He is going to be front and center, and I'm just adhering him with a bit of my clear matte Mod Podge. And then I also added some of these. I'm not sure what they were supposed to be. It kind of looked like some sort of sweets in a mug. So I added those and I thought for the hot cocoa bar, it would be perfect to put some marshmallows inside. Full disclosure, these are my staging marshmallows. They are stale and very old. Of course, I would use <laughs> some new fresh marshmallows if I was actually doing this. And then I just started decorating the cart with some different cocoa themed things that I had on hand. This Milk for Santa jar is actually for sale right now in my Etsy shop. So check that out if you're interested in having one. 
but I thought this DIY went so perfectly with the hot cocoa bar. You might also recognize a, another DIY from a previous video, the Merry Christmas sign, which is front and center on our transformed Christmas bar. This next DIY might be the easiest one in the whole video, but it's a great way to, again, quickly and easily get into the holiday spirit by transforming some of the items you might already have around your house. These large glass candles are amazing from the Dollar Tree because the window clings adhere absolutely perfectly onto them. No Mod Podge or any type of adhesive is needed. You can add on whatever kind of window cling you like best and they will instantly stick right to the glass candle. I finished this DIY off by just grabbing some of this red and white string and wrapping it around the top of our candle. It's a really great deal from the Dollar Tree. You get a large amount for only $1.25. The next DIY was so easy, I almost didn't include it because I didn't exactly consider it a DIY, but I thought it would be an amazing one to do with kids. There's no hot glue involved when you're placing down the puffy stickers. So I think this would be a really fun one to do with them. Give them this sticker sheet that comes in the back of the vinyl clings from the Dollar Tree and let them decorate their own Dollar Tree cutting board in whatever way they like. I wanted this to go in my kitchen and kind of have that sugary sweet candy theme so I placed down the candy canes gingerbread house and gingerbread stars now this is the part where you would want some adult supervision because I did use hot glue to decorate the top of the cutting board I added in some green garlands and some of this red and white gingham colored ribbon also, you can see I was really easily able to remove the stickers and kind of reposition them and scoot them down. They're not super sticky, so they are able to be moved so they won't leave any residue on your walls or your cutting board if you use it like I did. Another easy way to transform some household items you already have into the Christmas spirit is by decorating one of your soap containers. So I have this one I just picked up at the grocery store and I used some scissors to remove the label that was already on it. And then I'm going in with the traditional window clings. Similar to the glass candle, I didn't need any adhesive with these. They were really easy to just lay down and they immediately stuck to the soap bottle. I went with the gnome. I kind of have a gnome theme going on in our guest bathroom. So I stuck with that. And then again, I'm taking this large amount. Again, it was only $1.25 for all of this red and white jute. And I'm wrapping it around the top of our soap bottle and adding a bow to just tie everything together. And again, keep it in that Christmas spirit. I told you all I have the gnome theme going on in the guest bathroom, so I thought that I would replace the plain, boring tissue box that I have in there and instead use this adorable Christmas-themed gnome one. The best part is you don't need very many supplies at all. I had this mason jar already on hand, so I just took some white paint and painted the entire mason jar. Then my plan was to use one of the window clings, but these wall art stickers were just too perfect. They were all gnome themed and so darn cute. So I went with one of these gnome stickers. It's always a little bit hard placing any type of sticker, even a window cling on a curved surface. So it wasn't absolutely perfect. There were a couple bubbles down at the bottom, but I figured once the mason jar was standing upright, you wouldn't really be able to see them anyway. So I just laid this down as best I I could without any of those bubbles and of course it tied it around the top with that red and white jute that I am absolutely loving. Next part was super easy. I just grabbed the tissues out of the box making sure to keep them in the arrangement they were already in and tuck them down in the bottom of our mason jar and transform that plain boring tissue box into this festive one. 
I love creating snow globes and snowscapes for the holidays and realized that I hadn't done one in a video yet. So I thought this would be the perfect time to create one using some of those classic original vinyl window clings. The first thing that I did was grab one of these jars. It is in the Dollar Tree marketed as a candle holder, candle jar, but I am going to be using this kind of as our top cloche. I used one of the wood ornaments for the base and then I placed in three of these little mini Christmas trees. The final touch was adding on our vinyl window clings. So I placed two of the snowflake stars in the front and then a larger Christmas tree, one in the back. I sprinkled it with some fake snow, added candles and another Christmas tree behind. And I love how this tablescape turned out. I think it would be the perfect centerpiece. This is another great window cling hack. If you have any candles, even ones like this one that I used for fall, I just turned it around so that I had the blank part of my candle, not the fall label part, and I easily adhered these window clings down onto the front of our candle. Like the previous glass candle, you don't need any type of adhesive. These immediately adhere on perfectly and you transform your fall candle into a Christmas one. The last DIY in today's video is a snowman tag. You could put this on your tree as an ornament or just use it as a decor piece. The base for this DIY is actually a USA tag that I got all the way back during the 4th of July season and I've been hanging on to it for the perfect DIY. I grabbed some white paint and just went over it so you wouldn't be able to see the USA and the stars. I did have to do a couple of coats of this because those were kind of shining through. Next, we're going to make our snowman's hat. I'm using some painter's tape and black paint to create the top layer of his hat. Then I went in with some more painter's tape and red paint to act as the brim of his hat. Then once that was dried and I peeled away those pieces of painter's tape, I was moving on to a little bit more of a 3D version of his hat. I had some Amazon boxes that I got some deliveries in, so I made that into a strip of some cord corrugated cardboard and I painted that black to go with the top of his hat and then I hot glued it right underneath that red section. The next part was creating our snowman's face and I did this just using paint, black, pink, and of course orange for the nose. I'm using one of the dotting tools from the Dollar Tree to create all of those finer details of his face. Then I went in with some of these puffy window clings. I liked the holly one and thought it went perfectly with his hat. So I placed that down on top and then I had this holly jolly transfer. So I rubbed that on to transfer it to our hat. And the last step was taking a bit of jute and creating a loop at the back so that I could transform it into an ornament if I wanted to. Or Kicking off a new week of Christmas DIYs and crafts, we are going to be starting off with this true reason for the season sign which says glory to the newborn king. Another great thing about this DIY is there are very few supplies involved. I first have one of these frames from the Dollar Tree and then I had some of this wood looking scrapbooking paper which I picked up from Hobby Lobby and I'm just figuring out the sizing of my paper and cutting off any of the excess before gluing that down to the inside of our frame and that is going to be the backdrop for our wood image. So this wood image I got in a pack from the Dollar Tree. It was an entire nativity scene. So we have the three wise men and I just used some Waverly stain on that before adhering down this decal image which says glory to the newborn king. I will have a free printable of that link down below but you could always paint or write it on using a marker. After getting some metallic gold paint and painting the gifts of the three wise men, just so that you'd be able to see them a little bit better on our wood background, I did distress them using a chip 
brush from Apple Barrel and some white paint. Again, this is just so that you would be able to see them a bit better since it was kind of blending into the wood scrapbooking paper. As the final touch, I had a glittery gold star in a Dollar Tree wood sticker pack. So I placed that on the top of our sign and then just using some glue dots, I placed the three wise men down at the bottom. Next, I am going to show you how to make over one of the long wood signs from the Dollar Tree using some paint and some other unlikely supplies. I always find these wood signs in the section of the Dollar Tree that has the candles and the picture frames. They're usually sitting on a shelf and they're actually pretty heavy and really feel like a real wood, not the MDF board that the Dollar Tree sometimes uses. So if you see these in your store, I would really recommend picking them up. So for this one, we just flipped our sign over. You could also paint the back white or paint over the lettering white. And then I've seen some people People use the half wood beads, but those can be a little pricey. So I was able to cover this entire sign with some of these round stickers that came in a pack at the Dollar Tree. And then I painted over them with some white paint. So it gave some really nice texture to our sign. I used a Merry Christmas decal to go down on top of our sign, but you could use a sticker, paint, or write out whatever kind of saying you want. For the end embellishments, I took some wood candy canes that I got in a pack from Dollar Tree and painted them to go along with the sign before hot gluing them down to each side. I absolutely love how simple and quick this was to make and how it turned out. In this video, I am really all about the quick and easy ways that you can bring some Christmas and winter decor into your home, and this DIY is a great one. All that I did was take one of these wood box signs from the Dollar Tree. They come out with these pretty much every season. This one is from fall, and I definitely saved that maple leaf. I'm gonna put that in my fall crafting bin and definitely use it next year. This is some faux shiplap paper that the Dollar Tree came out with. I would suggest going to Hobby Lobby if you have one locally. You can actually get more paper for less than $1.25, but I've had this one for a while, so I decided to use this as the background. It is adhesive wallpaper, but I'm really just using it as scrapbooking paper, and all that I did was use a glue stick to glue it down. I used a decal that said walking in a winter wonderland and I'll have that free for you all to print out in a link down below. And then I grabbed some of these adhesive wood stickers from the Dollar Tree. I painted the snowflakes blue and white to go with the winter theme and then just used the adhesive that they already came with to adhere them down to the sign. The last step for this DIY was making a bow to go on top and I made one pretty much identical to the one in the ornament DIY I did previously. I did a single burlap bow and then a black and white buffalo check one on top. I mentioned in a previous DIY that I found these really great wood ornaments from the Dollar Tree in the Crafters Square section. I haven't seen them in previous years, so if you see them, I would definitely recommend picking them up. You get three in a pack. So I have a Let It Snow stencil, and I thought this would be perfect to go onto the wood ornament. Again, I will also have a printable for you link down below if you wanted to just use a glue stick or even Mod Podge to put it on your wood ornament. For this one, I am doing the snowman's scarf blue as well as the snowflakes. Of course, his carrot nose had to be orange, and then I went in with some black for the outline of our snowman and for the Let It Snow sign. Also using these wood ornaments, I have made custom baby's first Christmas ornaments. You could do family ornaments. I just think these are a really great find from the Dollar Tree. You'll have to let me know in the comments down below if you've seen these in your stores. I've only seen them once, so I don't know if they sold out or maybe didn't restock them, but I think they're a really great deal. And they also come with the jute that will be needed to turn this wood round into an ornament. 
the last DIY in today's video is going to be a Dollar Tree snow globe makeover. I did this with some vinyl that is a stick on, but you could also use it with construction paper or scrapbooking paper, or even better, I'm of course going to have a free principle down below that you would just need to print out and glue on to the snow globe. I love the snow globes that the Dollar Tree came out with and last year I just displayed it as is. I thought it was really pretty so I didn't want to cover that up so I decided to make this into a double sided or reversible snow globe depending on how I wanted to use it. I did this snow globe using lots of pinks and pastel colors. I think it'd be really cute in a little girl's room and maybe on her nightstand or her dresser and I am again just using some different colored vinyl scraps that I have to make this let it snow snow globe. I tend to be more of a traditional Christmas decorator, reds, greens, some golds and silvers, but I know a lot of people love the pinks and the pastels and lots of glitter. So you'll have to let me know in the comments down below, what kind of Christmas decor do you like best? Do you keep it traditional or do you step outside of the box and go for some more colors? Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, keep searching, keep creating.